Welcome back to module seven of the Anamorphic Cookbook. In this module, we're going on set and working out anamorphic centric scenarios. Our sponsor is Lumix, and we are filming all of this using an assortment of their cameras. In the first episode, we talked about prep day, and in episode two, we looked at achieving critical focus, which turns out to be way more critical for scopes than it is for sphericals. Today, we are looking at diopters, or close-up filters, and how they can boost your anamorphic look. We are on set, blocking our scene, working out where the camera's gonna be. For our lead's close-up shot, we decided to use an 85mm lens and march in super close with the sticks. We are stepping into minimum focus territory for anamorphic adapters and even some anamorphic lenses. In this situation, one of two things usually happens. We can't find focus as we are past mins, or the image doesn't look like what we'd expect, like what we saw in module one with anamorphic mumps. It's important to highlight that mumps aren't inherent to all anamorphics, just synchro focus systems. Still, one piece of gear solves both of these problems, diopters. Diopters, or close-up filters, are the most underrated bit in the anamorphic toolkit. The vast majority of filmmakers only bothers with diopters if their lens's minimum focus isn't short enough for the shot. Diopters are much more than that. Diopters are like reading glasses for lenses. While a lot of people perceive wearing glasses as a downgrade from perfect vision, optically speaking, they're more like upgrades, bypassing your eyes' limitations and allowing you to see fine detail where all there was before was a blur. We must think of diopters the same way, as upgrades. Having a good set and using them can really up your visual game. Why do we need reading glasses? The medical name is presbyopia, and it means our eyes are unable to focus at closer distances. Because of that, we need corrective lenses to bend light in a way our eyes can see at close range. The caveat for human eyes is that reading glasses limit our sight within a few dozen centimeters or a couple feet, and things past that distance will be blurry. Funny enough, this example can be directly translated into camera lenses. It's safe to say anamorphic adapters and even older anamorphic lenses are presbyopic in the sense that they're unable of or poor performing when close focusing. Close-up filters are reading glasses for anamorphics. Not like reading glasses, but exactly reading glasses. They're the very same type of lens and measure their power in the same unit, diopters. Hence the rent. The word diopter is a unit of measurement. Calling a close-up lens by the name diopter is like calling a camera lens by the name millimeter. Since diopter is a unit of measurement, you can have positive and negative diopters. But unless you're designing lenses, we're only using positive diopters on set. They're not filters, like many believe, but auxiliary lenses. They have their own rules and powers. And if you're using a screw-on diopter, make sure no other filters go in front of it. When you slap on a diopter, infinity focus changes according to that diopter's power. With a plus one power, infinity sits at one meter away from the front of it. That's about three feet in American. It does not take into account the optical chain behind it, which means the distance to the sensor does not matter. Much like what we saw with variable diopter adapter setups that measure focus from the front element instead of the film plane. There's a bit of math involved in figuring out what's the best diopter for each situation, so brace yourself. A diopter's power relates to how close it brings infinity focus. Diopters come in various flavors, ranging from plus 0.25 all the way to plus 10. And since we talked about negative and positive diopters a little bit ago, positive values mean that they are converging lenses. The math is actually simple. Divide one by the diopter's power, and that's your new infinity, distance in meters. For example, if you consider a plus two diopter, dividing one by two gives us half, and half a meter is as far as we can focus. A hack for the distance in feet is to divide three by the diopter power. In the same example, we'll divide three by two, which equals to one and a half feet as maximum focus. 
a plus one diopter will be limited to one meter or three feet maximum focus, as one divided by one equals one, and three divided by one equals three. Figuring out the minimum focus of a diopter setup is much trickier, and I don't bother doing that math myself on set. It relates to your lens's original minimum focus. To save us time and effort, I made a calculator that you can use, and you will find the link below this video. From the examples, we can tell that diopters with plus one or greater power already put you in extreme close range with your subjects. Most of the times, we don't want to be that close, which is why fraction power diopters are the most desired ones. Some of the popular powers are plus 0.5 and plus 0.33. I have tutorials on how to get those for cheap for screw-on filters, and we are seeing an uptick in good offering of diopters such as Simmod Lens, Schneider, or Viltrox. This might seem obvious to some, but why would we need multiple diopters exactly? Reason number one being that most anamorphics perform best as they approach infinity focus. Diopters are key to keeping your system focused around infinity and achieving the best possible image quality. It usually means less chromatic aberration and better resolving power. And since not all of your shots are at the same distance from your subject, you will need multiple diopter powers adjusting as you position yourself in regards to the subject. Last, if you really want to go for image quality, just wait until we get to achromatic diopters. The second reason is even more important, for streamlining your workflow. We already brought up before that many anamorphic adapters and lenses change their squeeze factor as they near minimum focus. This varies from lens to lens, and not all anamorphics have this issue. Still, the COA B and H comes from 2 times squeeze at infinity, down to 1.75 at close focus. Samyang's 1.7 adapter goes to 1.5 times at minimum focus. This much of a change is bad for multiple reasons. First of all, we can't stretch all your clips by the default value as we'd hoped, because that would lead to close focus shots being overstretched. The famous anamorphic mumps that come back to haunt us. We can still go, what if I build like a chart, like a 2 times stretch at infinity, 1.8 times stretch at close focus, and do the math from there. This way, I can figure out the stretch at any given distance. Let's assume that that's a good idea. It's really not. You would then have to write down the focusing distance for every single shot. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. If you still want to think about it, I talk about this approach in Module 8 with examples. The last advantage of using diopters is purely aesthetic. And aesthetics are the main reason we choose to shoot anamorphic, isn't it? When comparing two close-up shots, one focusing just the lenses and the other one using a diopter, you will notice bokeh is more pronounced in the diopter shot, although framing and distance to camera are identical. Are we going to say we want less bokeh? The explanation for this is math-heavy, so I won't get into it. But you can take my advice. Always try to have a diopter on one that almost matches your focus range to the subject. For better performance, achromatic diopters came along and they are a little more elaborate. They're also called doublets. Doublets feature two pieces of glass that counter each other's flaws. The results are crisper images and an overall improvement across the frame, especially at the edges. The downsides are that doublets are less common and they go for a higher price. They're also heavier and thicker than single elements. In the beginning, I recommend sticking to single elements, like a $20 kit from Amazon. The advantages from doublets do not outweigh the price difference if you're not used to using them yet. Here's a comparison of setups using a plus two achromatic and a plain plus two. You can find a chart of known doublets and their data in the video description too. Hunting for doublets used to be a side quest for users of anamorphic adapters, but lucky for us, they're not as uncommon as they used to be. Call this an abridged take on split field diopters, because I already have a full video on them. I will stick to the concepts here. A split field diopter is literally a diopter cut in half, which allows a lens to focus both near and far on different sides of the frame, or the field. Split field diopters are tools meant to divide our audience's attention within a single frame. 
They're perfect for anamorphic filmmaking because of the inherently wide aspect ratio. Opposed to the approach of deep focus, the split field diopter maintains narrow planes of focus on both sides of the frame, prompting us to look at two different areas of focus. And like the lens itself, our attention is split for narrative purposes. Split diopters also mess with our sense of depth, making both close and far elements be in proximity. Most times the effect is subtle. You can't immediately put your finger on it until you start watching four split diopter shots. And although that's a fun game, the vast majority of films and shows don't have split diopter shots in them, so don't beat yourself over it. I want to point out this blurred scene, which is a consequence of having a piece of glass covering only half of the front of your lens. The visible scene can provide a dreamlike and natural quality to the shot, but if you want something more discreet, you can use the set to hide the scene. The hardest part of working with split field diopters is blocking the shots. The distances and marks must be super accurate because if you adjust focus on the lens to compensate for small changes on one side, the other size of the frame will adjust differently. We're gonna set our split diopters, so we're gonna focus on our background. Okay. Then this guy up here, then we're gonna roll in the foreground in a way that works for the split diopter. And adjust set deck, actors, or props for the foreground. Tweaks happen in that process, but the general idea of the shot stays the same. A warning, it's very easy to get stuck trying to figure out how to achieve a split diopter shot on set. So plan ahead. Incorporating diopters into your workflow requires a lot of practice, so don't feel bad if you don't reach for them first thing when setting up a shot. But try to consider them and what is there to gain from their use as you progress through your day. Double points if you start thinking of creative ways to use split diopters to shorten your shot list. In the next and final episode of this module, we will take a closer look at in-camera stabilization for anamorphics, which so far is a feature only offered by Lumix, our sponsor for this module. It is something I almost never turn off and that gives me great flexibility to move the camera spontaneously. Okay, now go get yourself some diopters or close-up lenses, if you prefer to call them that way, and level up your game. I'll see you in the next episode. Chitufahadens, out.